Hey everyone, in the next five minutes, I'll teach you how to convert a lead using a screen flow inside of Salesforce. And this actually is something I learned how to do when working with a client who had an existing screen flow in Salesforce. And I'll actually jump over to a very simple version of that flow. But um, basically my client had a screen flow where their sales reps would uh, fill in a, a bunch of information about a potential customer. Um, you know, things like age, you know, all, all the standard lead stuff. They'd also indicate the types of services that the client would be interested in or the potential client would be interested in. And then they had like a, a process of doing a duplicate matching. Um, and basically at the end of this, you know, kind of complicated screen flow, there was, you know, five or six different screens. They needed to be able to convert a lead into an account contact and opportunity. You can't do that natively in Salesforce. And so that's where this solution came in. So I built a really simple screen and we'll come back to this. But the first thing that we have to do is add the functionality into Salesforce that will allow a screen flow to do the conversion. And the way we're gonna do that is by using Apex. And that might intimidate you, but don't worry, this is just gonna be a copy paste operation. So there's nothing to worry about. Um, what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna click this little uh, gear icon, and then I'm gonna click developer console. And this will open up the developer console for whatever I'm, environment I'm in. If you're following along, uh, you'll need to either do this in a trailhead environment like the one I'm doing it in, or you'll have to start in Sandbox first. You're not going to be able to deploy Apex code directly into a production environment, and nor should you. You uh, always want to test in Sandbox first. So follow along in Sandbox or trailhead, but uh, you can go into the developer console here, press File, New, and then just click Apex Class. And I'm going to call this Convert Lead Apex. You can really name it anything you want. And once we have this file created, um, I'm going to tab over. I'm going to move this so I can get back to it quickly. I've posted this code online. There's going to be a link in the video description that you can click. And what we're going to do is we're just going to copy everything that's in this convert lead apex block. So starting on line one here, all the way down to line 119. Copy that into your uh, browsers clipboard. And then here inside of the apex, I went back into the developer console here, just kind of spread this out. And I'm just going to paste that in here. So you'll see that uh, the code from this link that's you know publicly available and is in the video description is now copied over into Salesforce here. And I'm going to press control S and you'll see that up here it says saving. And that's saving and now it's done. Um, so we'll go back into Salesforce. And so I've just created basically the code I need that will allow me to convert um, a lead inside of Salesforce. And so let's test it out. Let's uh, actually use this. So I have this screen flow here. I'm going to close this out and I'm going to go back to my lead page here and press new. And I'll just make a test lead or I'll just make a lead call, called Bob Apples. And he works at Appleseed Enterprises. And his lead status is open, not contacted. So we'll just press save. I think those are all the fields that we really had to fill in. So what I can do now is navigate back to the flow builder by clicking the little gear icon and pressing setup. And then I'll type in flows, click that open. And I'll just go into this simple flow that I had before. And so you can really use this in any screen flow. Um, the key thing that the flow needs to uh, do is reference the apex that we just pasted into the environment. And the way we do that is by, uh, in our canvas, we click the little plus icon and we click action. And you'll see that a bunch of actions kind of appear over here on the right hand side. And so I'm going to click this drop down and then I'm going to select category. Oops. I mean, I'm going to select type. <laughs> and you'll see that there's uh, one here called apex and it's a action of the apex type is kind of how you could think about that. We'll click that once. And you'll see that our convert lead apex code is now available here. So we can click that once and now we can configure this action. And you'll notice on the canvas that the apex action kind of, you know, has its own little element up here. So I'll just call this uh, convert lead and we have to provide, um, or we, we have to provide at least two parameters into this code to get it to work. And so one is the converted status and that's going to be um, the value that or the, the status value that represents a converted lead. And then we have to do um, or, or provide the lead ID. And so to get the first value, what you can do is from the lead object, you can click uh, the gear icon 
and click Edit Object, and kind of open that up in a new tab. And then I'm going to click Fields and Relationships. And kind of midway down, you'll see that there's a Lead Status option here. So I'll click that. And that's a field, it's an actual field called Lead Status. And what we're looking for is the name of the status that represents the converted value in your environment. So in, my, in this environment, it says uh, closed-converted, and that represents a converted lead. In your environment, it might be something different. It might just be converted, it might be closed, it might be, I don't know, ready to work or like, like whatever it is, you'll know it's the right one because it has this converted um, check mark ticked off. So I'm gonna copy this value to my clipboard. I'm gonna go back to my flow and we'll just paste that in here, just like that. And then the second uh, parameter that needs to be provided to this action is the um, ID of the lead that you want to convert. So in this very simple flow, I have a lookup element in my screen. I'll show you that in a second. And it's just called the lead. And that stores the uh, ID value of the lead I'm working with. You could get this uh, lead value in one of several ways. So I'm using a screen here, but if you have a get records element that is you know, getting the lead value uh, or the value of the lead ID, you could pass it here. Um, but you just you need to get that lead ID and then you can put it here. These other uh, parameters allow you to kind of toggle on or off whether you want to email the owner of the lead, if you want to configure a custom opportunity name, if you even want to create an opportunity or not, and if you want to provide um, any duplicate values. Um, for example, a lead could be entered in the system even though it already has an account or contact. And so if you want to provide the existing account ID or the existing contact ID for the lead to convert to so as not to create a duplicate, you could do that here. Just to keep it simple, I'm going to leave these all toggled off and I'm just going to press save. So we basically set everything up now and we can just do a test run. And so you'll see here that I'm on the Bob Apple's lead and you know they're open, not contacted. I'm going to debug this flow and it's going to open up in a, a new window here. It's going to let me run and my very simple lead screen will let me search for leads. And we see that the Bob Apple leads just pops up right away. So I'll click that and I'll press next. And when I press next, uh, Salesforce will fire that apex and it will convert this lead. So we'll press next. This runs through very quickly. It's all done and uh, there were no errors or anything, so that's great. And if we go back to this lead and I refresh, uh, you'll see it kind of throws an error, like the lead was effectively converted is what's happening. That's why this lead uh, isn't loading. So although the red error looks bad, it, it does mean the lead was converted and that's good. And we know that it's converted because if I click on accounts here, uh, you'll see this uh, Appleseed Enterprises um, account is now at the top. And um, if we look at the details, we can see that this account was created just today, uh, a, few mi a few minutes ago. And so the account was created, and if we click on the related list, you'll see that there's a contact and an opportunity uh, that were created at the same time uh, by our lead you know, conversion. So that was created at 2.13 today. And so is this. And so in essence, you know, that's all you need to do is just copy paste this code into your environment and then set it up um, or, or use it in a, in a flow like I've done here. There is a final step, and this is really important to do. Um, if you're in a sandbox environment, you know that when you deploy code to production, uh, you have to run a test class against your code. I have provided that test class here, and I'll just walk you through how to set that up if you're interested. If not, you know, feel free to click off the video and thanks for watching, but I'll just go through this process for anyone that doesn't know how to set up a test class. So, um, We'll go back into Salesforce here and I'll just open up the developer console again um, in case you forgot or closed it out for whatever reason. Um, what I'll do is I'm just clicking this gear icon and pressing developer console. The reason I'm using the developer console is because everyone has it. Um, obviously something like Visual Studio Code would be better, but uh, for everyone watching the video, I know you'll all have <laughs> the developer console, whereas I don't know if you'll all have Visual Studio. So at any rate, I'm going to make a new Apex class. I kind of went through that a little bit fast, but just like we did before, I'll click File, New Apex, and I'm just going to call this Convert Lead Apex Test and press OK. This makes a new Apex class and it's totally empty. And just like we did before, I'm going to go back into this code and I'm going to scroll all the way 
to the, to the bottom or mid, midway through. And there's a, a code segment labeled convert lead apex test. And you'll see that on line one, it says at is test. It's annotated as a test class. And I'll just highlight all of this. And uh, that's line one through 129. And I'll go into uh, our test class back in our, our developer um, console. And I'll just paste that in here. And I'm going to press save. And when I press save, you'll see it's going to throw an error. It's actually going to throw a bunch of errors. And that's what we're going to have to solve uh, together. Oh, OK. Well, it just worked. Um, maybe I already updated it. Yeah, I did. OK. So false alarm. But what I do want to call your attention to is that uh, this Apex test class is using a converted status here. So when you, uh, to kind of simplify things, when you run a test class, you, you create fake data in the system. So this test class is designed to per basically pretend to create a lead and convert it. And when it does that conversion, it sets the converted status like we did in our screen to be closed dash converted. Um, and you'll know that, or you'll recall that that's one of the conversion statuses that we have available in the lead status field. In your environment, if you don't have a uh, closed dash converted status that is uh, toggled as the um, conversion status, then you'll get an error when you try to save this apex. So the reason I was thinking that you know this might not save the first time is because this converted status wasn't set up properly. It happened to match this trailhead environment because I built this in a different trailhead environment. But what I'm trying to say in a very long-winded way is that you, um, whoever you are, need to go in here and basically everywhere it says closed dash converted, you'll wanna change that part of the code to be um, whatever status is converted in your environment. And so to give you an example of that, I'll kind of do it here. So I'm gonna press new on the lead status. You don't have to do this. And I'm just gonna create a new status called converted. Oops, and I'll, I'll flag that as a converted status. And so basically I'm gonna copy this value because it's uh, labeled as a converted status. And then everywhere in my code where I can type, or I'm gonna replace the closed dash converted value everywhere in my code to be that converted status that I just created. And you'll wanna do the same in your environment to match whatever the lead converter status is uh, for you. And so in the code to make this easy, I'm gonna press control F on the keyboard and that opens up this little search window. And then I can type in closed dash converted and you'll see that it will just kind of, um, oops, it'll allow me to just like quickly go through uh, and find all the, the examples of the converted status here. So I'll just change that out. I'll change this out. And that might be it. So let's save and see. So that's saved. And I'm just gonna do another check and just make sure. Yeah, so converted status, that's filled in correctly, that's filled in correctly, and that's filled in correctly. Okay, so to kind of summarize, it'll be line 24 in your code. It'll be line uh, 77, and then line 111. So that's 24, 77, and in line 111, that need to be updated to represent the converted status uh, that's in your environment. And we know that this works because if I uh, do a new test run here and I pick my convert lead apex test and we run it, and click on test, we see that it passes. If I open this up, we can go look at the code coverage and we're getting 91%, which is good enough to deploy. So, um, I hope this video was helpful, kind of a, a long-winded explanation there at the end about how to get the uh, Apex test class working. But I will put a link to that code in the description of the video. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know in the comments. But other than that, uh, thanks for watching. And oh, one thing, if you want more tips like this, check out my website at nickfreights.com. I have a weekly uh, newsletter where I send out tips just like this one, and it will help you um, I don't know, stay in the loop on, on cool stuff like this. So feel free to check it out.